Hey guys, Gabe here from Our Simple Story, and in this quick video, I'm going to show you how I built a PVC solar shower that gives me fresh hot water anywhere I go and can be mounted on the roof of my car. So stick around, hit that like and subscribe button on your way in. I'd greatly appreciate it. Here we go. So this is all the material that you need to build this solar shower. All of these items can be listed and detailed down in my description box. This all cost me $102 for my local Lowe's. What I'm doing now from one end is I'm measuring eight feet. I bought a 10 foot, four inch PVC pipe, schedule 40 PVC pipe, but I'm measuring and using only eight feet of that. So I'm cutting off the two feet that I'm not gonna use. That's gonna be waste. Just put that off to the side. Now, one of the things you wanna do when you cut PVC is make sure you clean off all the burrs and you don't want those going into your, your water. Um, also, they prevent uh, effective gluing and it's sliding together when you're trying to glue. So now I'm coming in 18 inches from the other end and I'm making another cut. And again, cleaning out any of the burrs. This is where my sweep clean out T is gonna go. So here's kind of a view of it all kind of dry fitted together. You can see I got my sweep and my um, check valve and another 16 to 18 inches, doesn't really matter how much, and then my cap. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking a hose bib, a brass hose bib, this is a half inch brass hose bib, and I'm drawing a line, tracing a line onto the, the cap where I'm gonna make my cut, and then I'm taking my tubeless stem valve, and I'm also gonna make a circle and trace where I need to make my cut. Now to make these cuts, I'm using a paddle bit, two different size paddle bits. For the first cut, the first hole, I'm gonna use a three quarter inch paddle bit. For the second hole, for the stem valve, I'm gonna be using a half inch paddle bit. And it's good, you want a good snug fit, you wanna be able to thread that thing in there. And on the back side, you're gonna see, you know, um, some gaps there where air can leak out and water can leak out. But I'm gonna show you here in a second how to fix that. So here I am drilling my half inch hole. This is where the stem valve is gonna go. And what I'm using is JB Weld's water weld. It's kind of like Play-Doh that you um, kind of mash together here and um, mix up and knead as like, you know, Play-Doh basically or, or dough. And you're gonna make kind of like a snake and it's gonna go around the, the gap here and around the brass threads. And within a matter of an hour or so, it's gonna harden like concrete and it's gonna give you a good seal and keep that hose bib from going anywhere and prevent air and water from leaking out around the threads of this hose bib. Next, I'm gonna take this silicone. This is a clear a GE brand silicone, but you can use any bath or shower silicone. It's also gonna serve as an adhesive and a sealant. So I'm gonna put it around the base of my valve stem. And I'm gonna pop that in place. It's always good to uh, drill a little smaller hole than you think you need, and then go up in size from there. You never wanna drill a hole that's too big, and then have to try to you know, fill that with silicone or putty. So I kept drilling, you know, with the paddle bit and resizing and making sure that my hole was just the right size. And then I take the silicone and put it around both sides and make sure I have a good seal on the inside and the outside. You let that sit up and dry for a couple hours, both your JB Weld and your silicone. Once it's dry and you feel like it's ready to go, it's hardened pretty good, then you're gonna take and start gluing your PVC components together. Now I just use standard PVC glue and primer. First thing you wanna do is prime all of your joints. The primer serves as a cleaner. It rids the surface of any oils that might prevent good adhesion. But also the primer acts a little bit as like an abrasive element and it uh, you know, etches the surface of the PVC just a bit so you get a good um, adhesion with your PVC glue. So it's good to cover every square inch of that where there's gonna be some sort of overlap in PVC joints to get that primer on there and get a good coverage of it. So go ahead, once you get all your primer, um, you know, all, all your different joints primed where you're gonna be and cleaned real good, you wanna make sure you get all the sand off of it, any kind of debris or, or particulates, it's good to keep them up off the ground a little bit. 
because those kinds of things are going to keep you from sliding these these big pieces of pipe together. When you're gluing pipe this big together, it's important that you have um, you know good first run because once that glue that PVC glue dries, you're done. You're locked in, and it dries very quickly, unfortunately. Whenever you're gluing PVC of any size, it's also good to um, be very generous with the glue. It's going to serve as a sealant, but also as a cement. And then when you slide it in, you always want to give it a little bit of a twist. If you can get it to twist about half an inch or an inch, what it does is it actually um, creates a little bit of a threading and it gets it a better seal. So you notice I always slide those parts together and I twist it just a bit. Um, it's really good to try to do. So I'm always very generous with my glue because when you're dealing with pressurized water and pressurized air, you want to make sure you have really good seal and coverage with your glue. Then you're going to take your check valve and kind of dry fit it down. And these are neat when you, when you screw them clockwise, they push a rubber gasket outwards and give you a good uh, airtight seal right there. Now this inlet is going to be, it's going to serve as our water intake valve. Basically we're going to, this is where we're going to fill up our, our solar shower from. So we're going to be able to remove and replace this cap at will and refill our shower using this clean out uh, sweep right here. Now you can use a straight 90 um, T if you could find one. Um, I just prefer the, the sweep, the 45 sweep. And what I did is I went from a four inch sweep on both ends to a three inch on the top. So my check valve where I fill is actually three inches in diameter. You know, the check valves are a little bit cheaper the smaller you go. So you might as well just get a, a little bit of smaller check valve and, and get the four by four by three um, PVC sweep. So now this is the tricky part. I'm gonna put this cap on here. This is what the kind of the business end of the shower, if you will. And like I said, I'm gonna to try to twist it a little bit. Then once all that sets and dries and you know that your PVC pipe has, uh, your PVC glue has cured, you know, I give it about 30 minutes to an hour or so, depending on the temperature. Go ahead and paint it. And I just have some, um, you know, you can use just regular Rust-Oleum paint, uh, whatever, whatever black paint you wanna use. The key with this is using flat black paint because that's going to absorb the most heat and not reflect it out. Then I use five to seven inch uh, PVC hose clamps. And these were about $2.48 each at my local Lowe's. And I just use those and clamp them right down onto the existing roof rack on top of my Toyota Sienna. And we're about to take a family trip here in a little bit. And so this is going to come in handy with this van. And then I'm going to fill this up. Now, some people wonder how much water can you fit in this thing? Well, I did the math. It's uh Pi R squared times L is the formula for finding the area of a vo uh, uh, the volume of a cylinder, and and then you convert it cubic inches into gallons. And this um, four inch by eight feet long tube, this shower holds 5.22 gallons. And depending on your discharge rate and the amount of pressure and the hose discharge rate, will determine how long your shower will last. But what we're going to do now is take a little air compressor, and I have a little. Uh, I think it's 120 PSI air compressor to run off of 12 volts. Now I'm just going to put a little bit of pressure, about 20 to 30 pounds of pressure in this thing. Now it's been sitting in the sun for about two to three hours. The surface of the pipe is uh, significantly warm. It's probably upwards of 120 degrees, just the surface of the pipe. So the water inside, I'm guessing, is about 85 to 90 degrees. And that's just right for taking a shower. You don't want anything hotter than that. It's going to be uncomfortable, especially in the summer. This is a privacy tent that I bought off of Amazon, and um, you can find this privacy tent in the description below. But here we go. Our shower is operational. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this.